Never has a club been more aptly named than Berry FC. Because that is what's happened. The club of 136 years of history has finally been extinguished. So all that's been flushed down the drain and just expelled from the EFL. Is this some kind of joke? Like how has this been allowed to happen? This is a club that's been around since 1885, older than any person on planet Earth. This is a club who's been in the Football League pyramid for decades. The people running it should have been nurturing it, cherishing this responsibility. How, how has this managed to happen? If you don't know much about Bury, right, they are a proud historic club. Don't let the fact that one of the stands is named after Phil Neville's dad fool you. This is a club who hold the record of Man City for the biggest win in an FA Cup final. Okay, yes, that was back in 1903, when half the players no doubt trained once a week and had a diet consisting of beer, chips and six pounds of nicotine. But it still counts, all right? The gates at Gig Lane have been closed since mid-July. It has had six competitive matches suspended this season. Oh, let's not forget the penalty of a 12-point deduction, because that was really helpful, wasn't it? This is literally the sight of a football club being strangled to death. Not only that, there's a small matter of 150 people being made redundant. That's 150 people who need to find work and quickly. Or they'll be feeding their family tins of baked beans for dinner. And the harsh reality is, in this current climate, some of those people won't find employment and will most likely have to go on the goddamn dole to survive. Like, how is this fair? For the last 12 weeks, Barry haven't been able to pay their staff. Relying surely on the kindness and goodwill from their tea ladies, kit men, for Christ's sake, even the goddamn players. And at the same time, only last year, there were calls for every Premier League club to donate half a million quid each as a parting gift for Richard Scudamore, the Premier League chief executive. Are we serious? There are clubs literally dying. And yet some people actually wanted to give the Premier League executive chairman an extra uh, five million quid as a f***ing thank you. A man who was already earning 2.5 million a year. What? Like it's problems like these at clubs like Bury that... That sort of makes you realise, you know, maybe your own club doesn't have it that bad. I mean, yes, the presence of Mike Ashley at Newcastle games no doubt induces such a rage in the home support that there's probably a risk of rectal bleeding, but... I mean, the club do still exist. Even for Man City, the most financially stable club in the goddamn country, champions of England, let's be honest, probably boasting the best Premier League side we've ever seen. Playing the sort of football that no doubt has City fans no doubt tossing themselves off under the breakfast table. And yet still, they have found something to complain about. And I'll show you now, this was the reaction immediately after VAR ruled out that last minute goal against Spurs earlier this month. Lost for f***ing words, football is f***ed. We should just quit this f***ing league. So this beyond belief. The game is gone. Football is finished. Yeah, I'm genuinely falling out of love with football. Think I'll ditch watching football and just check the results on the weekend. Football is dead to me. Last game I will watch. No point in investing your time or health when it has come to this. Last game you will watch. Am I reading this correctly? This is the champions of England. One draw at home and they're already threatening a f***ing boycott. This is literally like a spoiled 15 year old brat complaining their diamond watch doesn't fit and threatening to quit the family because you only received three MacBook Pros at Christmas. If you want to find actual clubs teetering on the precipice, just tear back the loose, thin veil of the Premier League. You know, the division buffed up by Sky and all the media conglomerates. And just have a look at English football's dark underbelly. The type that's been ignored by the heads at the top. The these are the really desperately badly run clubs. And yet, nobody seems to care until it's too late. We have football clubs literally going out of business, dying in front of their supporters eyes. And yet the big wigs of the Premier League are threatening to never watch another league game because they were denied a last minute goal. You want to see some real problems lads. Berry FC were drowning in financial problems last year and were taken over by a man called Steve Dale who's supposed to alleviate these troubles. Eight months later the club have essentially been wiped off the face of the f planet. I didn't even know there was a football team called Berry to be honest with you. I'm, I'm not a football fan. <sighs> The owner of Berry Football Club, lads. A fella who, by his own admission, didn't even know the club existed. Can we please stop having lads take on the mantle of a football club when they don't even care a jot for the sport? Please! The man is saying he's not a football fan. Then what are you doing owning a football club? You don't see me investing in the local Tiddlywings team, now do you? And again, right now I can barely invest in a f***ing yoghurt, but still, that's not the point. Yeah, I think it's fantastic that they are that passionate. But what they need to do is temper it and not be silly and not show themselves up by disgraceful behaviour when they're full of beer. Show themselves up! <laughs> Are we serious? Sorry Steve, I mean the only person showing themselves up here is you. Having the audacity to blame some of the Berry fans, you just killed their club. It's like turning up to a funeral and giving out because people in the crowd are f***ing crying. You're literally lecturing them on how to behave at a goddamn football match. But thanks to you, I mean that won't be a problem right now because they won't have a football match to go to. Instead they'll be forced to spend their Saturday afternoons 
Shopping with the goddamn missus. A uh, fate sometimes worse than death. Look, there's plenty of blame to go around here, right? But let's ask a couple of questions of the EFL. Namely, why didn't you vet this man when he was interested in buying Burnley six months ago? You know, the, the fit and proper person's test. Because if you looked into it, you'd realize that 43 of the 51 companies he's ever been associated with have all been liquidated. And he's like going on a Tinder date with someone who's killed six of her last seven boyfriends. When you realize that she has about three severed heads stuck in her fridge, you might think, maybe I won't be going back with you. 43 companies gone. And you allow him to invest in a football club that is literally the bedrock of the community. How has this been allowed to happen? I love this sport and to see things like this happen to a... It just shouldn't happen. You need to treat the men running football clubs with a bit more levity and caution. It's the same as at an airport. You, like you wouldn't let any old joker smelling of six week old piss fly the plane to Spain because more than likely, he'll probably crash into the goddamn terminal. It's the same for football clubs and their owners. There needs to be a clampdown, a proper vetting system. Otherwise, apparently the only thing you need to run a football club is money. Who cares about the common sense? Who cares about any morsel of rational thinking? As long as you have a couple of quid, yeah. Why not just gamble the fate of 136 years of history? Four months ago, this club were celebrating promotion from League Two. Now, literally all that counts for absolutely nothing. You know what? Not even that counts for nothing. Over 100 years counts for nothing. Instead, just rotting in the ground. And it's just needless. I mean, Premier League clubs are literally living on another planet from the rest of the world. This happened on the same day that a fellow football club, just nine miles up the road, sentenced one of their players to Italy on loan. Alexis Sanchez, who was earning half a million pounds a week. Half a million. And yet they're still supposed to be in the same football pyramid, the same stratosphere. And yet United are a club who are essentially booting this player out like a bottle of three week old milk after handing him the most stupid contract on earth. Like football clubs are literally going out of business nine miles down the road. And there's one lad sat on the bench with half a million quid extra in his pocket every week. It's actually disgusting. And no, I'm not laying blame at the feet of Man United. It's just the esoteric Premier League. They're supposed to be in the same football pyramid as, as clubs like Berry. They're on completely different planets, and why is this? Why is this? Clubs like Berry are just shoved in the corner and left to rot under the stairs. And when people finally pay attention to them, again, it's, it's too late. This is just an example of a club who's been neglected to death. It's like not feeding your dog for 12 weeks. What do you think is gonna happen? The fans are devastated. I mean, for them, it would be like losing a family member. For Christ's sake, a former director tied herself to the stadium out of sheer goddamn protest. I'm sure she didn't want to be after doing this, lads. I'm sure she had better things to be doing with her Friday evening. Like, again, how has this been allowed to happen? But it's not just Bury. In two weeks, we might be losing Bolton Wanderers, who with they themselves also on the brink of liquidation after their latest takeover bid collapsed. It's already a disgrace that Bury are gone. If Bolton go too, that will make an absolute farce of the Football League. This is a club who were in the goddamn Premier League seven years ago. I remember when they were signing JJ Okocha. I remember when they were getting results against Bayern Munich away. And yet here we are, two weeks from them going out of business. If this is to be Bolton's death, it's not going out with any semblance of real dignity, considering they're stuck in League One on minus 11 points and just concede five goals every goddamn week, forced to field a team of terrified youngsters. It's essentially like being slowly eaten alive by your f***ing cats in a house that smells of armpit sweat. It's undignified in every sense of the word. If you told Bolton when they reached an FA Cup semi-final in 2011 that in eight years, they'd be on the brink of going out of business. They'd have had you committed. This shouldn't be allowed to happen to any club, ever. But it does. For Christ's sake, I mean, look at Darlington, all right? Yes, that town might smell of six-week-old milk, and it's home to people who look like they drink pints of shampoo and marry their cousins. But the football club was once a dignified bastion of pride in the town who were competing in League Two just 10 years ago. Two years later, they were relegated four divisions and told to wind up. And why? because their owner decided to chuck 25 million quid on a 25,000 seater stadium in League Two. Lads, I've been to Darlington, all right? Half the people there look on the verge of death. How did he expect 25,000 people to walk through the gates every other Saturday afternoon to watch them play Port Vale and Lake Norient? It's nonsensical decisions like these that kill football clubs. And that's exactly what happened to them in 2003. Yes, Berry and Bolton will most likely reform within a few months, but that isn't the point. No fan 
should have to sit through the death of their football club. These are things that are already hundreds of years old. They should outlive each and every one of their fans until the planet gets hit by a goddamn asteroid. But it's worrying though, when you see clubs like Hereford and Aldershot Town go out of business, yeah, it's sad. But maybe it doesn't resonate with those at the top. Maybe it's so far removed from the clubs at the top of the pile that no one really cares. How much longer until clubs from the Premier League are are being wound up. For Christ's sake, Baltimore in the top flight just seven years ago. In the year 2026, what will, will Aston Villa be going out of business? Southampton? It's a joke, an absolute joke. But alright, okay. This goes for owners the length and breadth of the country. You need to realise that football clubs aren't just an expensive commodity, a lavish plaything used to lap up attention and boost your anecdotes at cocktail parties. They aren't just this expensive air freshener used to make your penis look bigger. No, they are a heartbeat for the community where they come from. They are the holy grail. I mean, when you take over a football club, you are assuming responsibility for thousands, in some cases millions of people across the globe and for their enjoyment of their Saturday afternoon. You have a responsibility to not only keep them afloat, but to actually inject some ambition into the place and if you can't do that if you can't if you can't take on that sheer weight of responsibility don't even think about crossing the threshold of that stadium don't even think about buying the club go and buy a Lamborghini or something go and buy a hotel whatever do not gamble with the fortunes and hopes of fans nationwide because you don't understand it if you invest in a football club you should be seeking to serve the fans and the best interests of the area don't just prop the stadium on a hill, coat it in advertisements and leave it to rot. I mean look at clubs like Newcastle where once St James's Park was once a hallowed beacon of hope. Now it's a glorified billboard going nowhere in life. A football ground is more than just a patch of grass and four stands. It's a cathedral for families worldwide and I don't think these owners understand that. Without sounding too sappy, it's a place where memories are created friendships are formed. For many, it's the only place they can actually call home. Fathers bringing their sons to games and then for that pattern to be recycled in a couple of decades. There is a certain intangible bond formed between a fan and its club. Going up those steps every Saturday afternoon is like a form of religion. And yet in many cases, these clubs are just wiped off the face of the earth. And for what? Because of the negligence of rich men who don't have a clue in the world of how to run a club. And as for the Premier League and EFL, more due diligence has to be taken when you're allowing these businessmen to complete takeovers. Yes, I know this is a sport where finance usually trumps all, but I don't care. Somebody might be the best businessman on earth. They might not have a clue how to run a football club. And if they don't, and if they don't have the funds to back up their claims, don't give them the keys to the job. Ugh, something really needs to be done or else we're gonna be seeing more devastating cases like Berry FC and maybe Bolton Wanderers. This shouldn't be allowed to happen. Anyway, that's the end of the video, lads. R.I.P. Berry. Your fans did not deserve this, and I hope you do reform as quickly as possible in whatever life form you choose to, to take. As for Bolton, let's just pray you don't end up as another statistic like Hereford or Aldershot Town. But yeah, anyway, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to go like, share, and subscribe. And as always, I'll talk to you in a while.